Yes. Now, one thing before we get started here, I wanted to call out, which I really like, is we've got this little question mark button here, which we can click on. And that brings up some tool tips for most of the adjustments here bar the game effects. But I'll explain that to you in just a moment as well. So it's really nice to see they've taken the time to write some explanations here. And they are quite well written as well. They are kind of heavy tech. And I think we can probably distill them a little bit for you guys as we go through this part of the video. But for the most part, it's gonna explain exactly what we need to know to get the job done. So these are the default settings that are in here by default. And well, I can already see, I don't know why you'd have total force, which is the wheelbase's overall strength set to 30%, which would be like, you know, five or six Newton meters. Uh, we're gonna want that probably closer to 10 or 12, I would imagine. So straight away, I'm gonna bump that up to, I think 70%, which would be about 10 Newton meters. Remembering again, we have 15 Newton meters of total force available to us. But before we get into all that, one thing I do wanna point out here is we've got a little section here for save as, and that allows us to save our own profile. So you can see I've actually already got one in there that I've started to set up for iRacing based off some settings that I've been looking at from other people. And I'll talk about that in just a moment too for you guys. But we can save our own INI files here for our own configurations of different cars or different sims. And because these are just basic INI files, you can also drag other people's profiles into this folder and load them yourself as well. So even though we don't have an import export button, so to speak, you can do it that way. Just drag it into the folder and you'll see it available in this little drop down menu here. So you can see I can choose between data INI which is just the default settings we've got loaded here, minus the 70% adjustment we just did. And then iRacing.ini sitting here as well, which is our other configuration. So we've got a write storage button, which allows us to write or commit the settings to the wheelbase, and then read, which allows us to pull the settings off the wheelbase and uh, see what we're actually working with here. Now making adjustments in here does appear to affect the wheel in real time as well. So if I crank up my friction, for example, I can straight away feel that that's gotten a lot stiffer crank it back down to 10 where it was, hit enter, and it goes back to how it was straight away. So it's nice that you can feel that immediate effect to what you're doing in here. It makes it a lot easier to kind of fine tune and you know get things to feel how you like. So let's just quickly go through some other settings here. I'm gonna start off with angle adjustment. Obviously we've got a centering button here as well. So we center our wheel, hit center, and we're centered, nice and simple. We've got an angle adjustment which goes between 1600. So if you're doing truck simulation or something like that, you can you know, do the roundy roundies. Now remember, because we've got a direct drive wheelbase here, there's no mechanical bump stops. So it's all software controlled. Now, one thing that I have noticed, and we'll just wind this back down to 360 degrees quickly to show you guys. So 360 is what you would use for say Formula One, for example. We'll wind that down to 360. Now, when I rotate it through, you can see when I hit the bump stop, I'm getting a bit of a runaway state here where the wheel starts bouncing like crazy. If we go the other way as well, you'll see the same thing too. Now, what that is, is it's the wheel reaching where it wants its soft bump stop to be or its software-based bump stop to be. And it's saying, okay, you've reached this point, go back a couple of steps to outside of that bump stop. But because I'm still applying pressure here, what it's doing is it's going back into the bump stop and it's saying reset and then it's going back in and it's getting into like a loop where it's just going bounce, 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 bounce. So it's not got the smarts to kind of go, all right, well, I know that you're at the bump stop. I can see that you're applying pressure. So kind of hold it somewhere around here. It's just going reset, 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 reset constantly. So we're probably not going to notice that when we're driving. It's, I mean, for me at least, it's quite rare that I actually hit the mechanical bump stops or sorry, the software based bump stops when I'm driving, but just something to be aware of, something that I think can definitely be improved and we noticed something similar with the M10 when we did a review of that about a year ago now as well. I'm gonna set this back to 900 again for now and hit enter. And that takes us back to 900 degrees of rotation, which is what we'd be using for the majority of GT style cars. But again, you can see when I hit that bump stop, we do get the bouncing effect. Now it's quite a nice feeling bump stop. It feels quite realistic compared to when you hit the bump stop in a real car. So they've done well there, but just a little thing that they can definitely improve I think, and again, it is important to remember that this is a software based thing. So it's certainly not a reflection on the quality of the hardware and it is something that I'm sure they can fix into the future. So just to note that for you guys. So let's go through these settings methodically for you now. So mechanical settings are settings that apply at a firmware level or driver level to the base itself. The game effect settings are filters that go on top of the effects coming out of the game. So almost like a preamplifier kind of thing, if you want to think of it that way. And then game force again is almost like a preamp that adjusts the gain level coming out of the game before it actually goes through the drivers and firmware. So everything that we're doing up here is affecting the way the wheelbase responds to those game effects. 
and everything down under game effects and game force is actually manipulating the effects as they come out of the game themselves. Now one thing that you will notice is some of these effects are greyed out. You can see at the moment the only effect I have here is game damper and constant force. So what that means is basically different games output force feedback in different ways. Some use canned effects, some use physics based effects and depending on how that's handled by the individual sims through the direct input protocol will determine whether or not these are available to adjust. And we've got another video which I'll link down in the description where we went through that in a lot of detail and explained exactly how all of that works. So I'd encourage you to check that out if what I'm saying here is not making any sense to you. But I mean this is a basic explanation of what you need to know to get up and running at least. So let's run through all these individual ones now. Total force adjust the maximum amount of torque available to the base use it carefully according to your personal situation it says here so again we've got this set to 70 which is about 10 newton meters that's generally where i end up on most of the wheelbases that i've tested and then over on the other side we've got our constant force which is adjusting the gain level actually coming out of the game itself so i like to leave that set to 100 i think it makes sense to make use of the full dynamic range as it comes out of the game and then just adjust our total force depending on our personal preference up here so i'm going to leave that at 100 and then adjust my total force to preference over here. We then have filter frequency, which is the cutoff frequency of the interpolation filter. So we can play around with that to our liking as well. Now, I don't know exactly how that's gonna impact things just yet. So we'll obviously play around with that and let you guys know once we've found a spot that we like. We then have wheel speed, which allows us to adjust the overall speed in which the wheel can respond to movements. So this is generally, you're probably gonna to wanna to leave this set to 100, I would imagine for most cars. Maybe the exception to this might be where you're drifting if it's accelerating a little bit too quickly and being a little bit too snappy for you. But again, you can fine tune this to your own preference. I like to have a nice snappy responsive wheel that kind of responds to you know small twitches or oversteer, understeer kind of effects as quickly as possible. So I'd imagine I'm probably gonna end up leaving this at around the default setting of 100, but again, We'll talk about this later on once we've had some time to play around. So then moving on to wheel spring, this is pretty self-explanatory. This is just the springing effect or the return to center effect. So you can see at the moment with it set at zero, wherever I stop the wheel is pretty much where it sits. If we crank this up to 100%, then the wheel tries to return to center. Now, most games actually have some sort of a spring effect or return to center effect actually built into their own force feedback effects. So generally, I would imagine you're gonna leave this at zero or maybe increase it slightly if you find the game effect isn't quite strong enough for your preference. But I, I tend to find that that feels pretty artificial in most games on most wheelbases that I've tried. So I'm imagining we're probably gonna end up leaving this somewhere around zero. Wheel damper, this is just the dampening effect that gets rid of some of the robotic feeling that you might experience. Again, I would imagine we'd probably end up keeping this quite low, but we can adjust that to our preference. Wheel friction, very self-explanatory once again. At the moment, a minimal amount of resistance there at 10. If we crank it down to zero, we've just got the resistance as it comes out of the game. And again, because we do have a game running in the background, there is a little bit of resistance there. You can kind of feel the weight of the car transferring across, but we'll talk about that in a moment too. And then if I crank that friction up to 100%, the wheel becomes quite stiff. And that actually feels very, very, very smooth. Again, we'll talk about this in a moment too, but very, very smooth. That's unrealistically heavy where it is at the moment. But again, it's a combination of the force feedback in the game plus an effect being applied to the base itself on top of that. So I'm gonna crank that back down to, where did I have it? I think 10. We'll hit enter. And then we have our game damper effect, which applies a dampening filter to the effects coming out of the game. I don't actually feel any difference when I play around with this at all. So I'm just gonna leave this set at 100, which is what they're recommending in the settings here as well. But again, check out my other video for a more detailed explanation on exactly how these kinds of settings work and what they're actually doing in the background. So then down the bottom here, we have a couple more settings for suspension, soft, normal, and hard and then response between stable and wild. So we'll have a play around with those in just a moment as well. I'm not 100% sure. I'm assuming because they're sitting under game effect, they're gonna be applying to the effects from the game and not a mechanical setting as well. But we'll play around with those in just a moment too and let you know what we find. So I think that covers pretty much everything we need to for Alpha Manager for now. Look, overall, it seems really good. I mean, all the settings that you need are there. It's well presented. One thing that I'm not seeing is a static force reduction filter. And that was one of the criticisms that I made of the VRS Direct Force Pro wheelbase as well. That's one thing that I really do love about the Fnatic wheelbases and the Simicube 2 wheelbases in particular. But really at face value, at least, that's the only thing that I see obviously missing from here. Everything else that we need is kind of there. And it's all very well presented. It's all very approachable. It doesn't look overwhelming when you look at it. And of course, because we do have these tool tips which explain what each of these settings do, that kind of makes you feel a little bit more confident going into it.